What's up guys, Retro Gaming Guy here. So today in this video, we're going to unbox, demo, and review this three terabyte plug and play game drive that I recently picked up off of AliExpress. So I paid $87 and change for this, and it has over 17,300 retro video games, plug and play ready to go. It's actually broken up into three different parts. So we've got Play Night for our AAA titles, we've got LaunchBox, and we also have RetroBat, both for our more retro stuff. So we have to, of course, unbox this, test it out, see what the reliability is like on here, the performance, and of course, see what the layout inside looks like to make sure there's not a ton of duplicates uh, and it's not just a convoluted mess. So we're going to unbox this, see what the drive actually looks like in here, how we would set it up, and then we'll dive in and see what it's all about. Let's dive into it. All right, guys, so as we open this up, you can see right here, we do have our game drive sitting right up here on top. Now, this looks like a massive game drive. This has to be a mechanical drive inside here, but it's definitely got a lot of weight to it. I believe it's one of those that has to have its separate power supply cable connected. So right under this flap right here, we do have exactly that. We have a power supply cable. So we do need to provide power to this in order to fire it up. And we also have a USB-A to USB-A connection. So one end is going to plug directly into the drive. The other end is going to plug into your PC. Now, because there's AAA titles on here, I definitely recommend a gaming PC to test this out and get the full capabilities of this. But for the more retro stuff, you don't necessarily need a gaming PC. Just make sure that you do have decent enough specs to handle the collections and emulators that you do intend to dive into today. So we're going to go ahead and hook this up to my HP Pavilion gaming PC. Let's get started and see what is waiting for us inside this drive. Here we are first in RetroBat. Now, the way that it landed for me was I landed right into Neo Geo MVS, which is multi-video system. So we're gonna go collection by collection. We're gonna see how many games for each collection are included on the RetroBat side. Then we'll jump over to probably LaunchBox, followed by Play Night. So it would be nice if we landed on the all games list. Actually, I'm gonna navigate to that and we'll, there we go, all games right here. This is how we probably should land here. Um, in a perfect world, just because I think that's the more streamlined way of navigating through this. That's your master list, it makes sense. So total games on the RetroBat side, 13,048 games. You can see that down in the bottom left corner. So we'll jump in here and you can see how everything is laid out. It's actually in alphabetical order. Now I jumped through here briefly before, so that's why I'm down a little bit lower than you would typically. You would end up up by the uh, numbers first, followed by A, B, C, D, and so on through the alphabet. So Everything is nicely put together. In some cases, we had double box art here for each title. Uh, in some cases, I saw we had um, screenshots. Sometimes it's screenshots and box art like we see right here for this title. But we also have information about each title in the bottom left corner. We have a description right here in the uh, bottom of the middle. And then again, it will kind of fluctuate collection by collection and sometimes title by title as to what images are populated in. But consistently have a text list on the right hand side it's in alphabetical order very easy to navigate another really cool feature with retrobat is we can hit select on our gamepad we can jump down to jump to game beginning with the letter and say we wanted an s title if we were scrolling through over 13,000 retro video games on this list it would take us all day and then some to actually get down to the s title so all we have to do here is just with our d-pad or our analog stick go over to s confirm it and it brings us straight into our titles that start with the letter S. So just a very easy way of navigating through our titles effectively. So we'll back out of this and we'll keep it moving here. So we're gonna jump into MAME here. So this is MAME 2003 plus. We have 1,908 total games here. We'll jump in here, take a quick look. So here you can see in some cases, it's gonna be just a screenshot and a screenshot for the images, which, you know, in a perfect world, I'd like to see it be box art and a screenshot there, but you know, it is what it is. As long as the games work, I, I honestly, I'm not gonna be super picky about the way that the uh, data kind of populates in here. So let's see if there's any that have, you know, the combination of cover art with a screenshot. Looks like they're all pretty much doubled up here. Yeah, there might be some in here somewhere that, you know, follow that same sort of layout as the previous options, but um, it is what it is. I'm, I'm not too, worked up about that by any means. All right, so back out of this collection again, that was 1,908 games in MAME. Next one down is Atari Lynx, 82 games here, and I'm not gonna jump into every single collection. We'd be here all day and night. So I'm gonna just jump into a handful of these, but I'll show you guys the game count for each collection. Turbo Graphics 16, 413 games. Next we have Turbo Duo here, or uh, PC Engine CD, Turbo Graphics CD, 
70 games in here. Next one is Game & Watch with 59 games. We've got Family Computer Disk System, 229 games. I like that that's not overloaded with thousands of games like we typically see on these uh, game drives that are just kind of padding numbers. I like the smaller collections here. I think they're a little bit easier to navigate and we don't have to worry about tons and tons of duplicates, but it's still early and there we go. See, I jinxed it right there. Game Boy, this is the original Game Boy, 1,174 games, way too many games in here. So let's jump in and see what we've got here. So right off the bat, I'm not seeing, you know what it could be? It's, it's that we have foreign releases too. So, all right, that's not such a bad thing. I was thinking that's just way too high for your US releases, but there's there does seem to be like, I mean, everything that you're seeing right now is foreign releases too. So when considering that, you know, it's not as big of a deal. Now, I can't say that there's no duplicates in here. There probably are some duplicates, but they're at least going to be different versions if, you know, if they're in here at all. So far, I'm not seeing duplicates, but that is a pretty big number for this. Just consider the fact, again, that, you know, there are foreign releases and US releases in here for Game Boy Original. So we'll jump out, keep it moving here. Game Boy Color over here, 1,028 games. So yeah, it's a little bit high. I think that, I don't know the exact number for Game Boy Color titles, how many were actually released, but I think it was around 600 and change, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere in that ballpark. So yeah, we definitely have too many here, but let's see what we've got. I'm not seeing obvious duplicates, just glancing over here at the list on the right-hand side. Everything seems to be its own title, nothing in there twice, and it is in alphabetical order. So if there are duplicates, you would see them side by side in this case. That's a big reason why a lot of these plug and play drives will actually avoid using alphabetical order because otherwise you would see, you know, if there's two that line up, you know, if there's two duplicates, you would see them side by side. So like this one here, they might look like duplicates, but it's actually the original and then the sequel. So um, also same as original Game Boy, we do have foreign releases in here as well as US releases. So yeah, I'm not, I'm not worked up about this at all. We'll back out. So over here we have Nintendo GameCube, 25 games. Love this collection. Love the fact that we have GameCube even included in here. So let's see what we have, because this is definitely one of my favorite retro game consoles. All right, so let's see what we've got here. We've got Mario Golf, we've got Mario Party 4, 5, 7, Mario Power Tennis over here. So uh, definitely a lot of good titles here. NBA 2K2 is a great one. We've got a bunch of NBA Lives. Street Volume 2 and 3, which is always good to have. Paper Mario, Prince of Persia, Super Mario Strikers, love Super Mario Strikers, Super Mario Sunshine. I mean, they've got all the classics in here for Mario, it looks like. So um, hopefully we have some Double Dash. I don't see, um, yeah, I don't see Mario Kart in here, which would be a pretty serious miss. Um, but we do seem to have everything else. I'm just going to make sure that that's not hiding in here and I didn't bypass it. So that's kind of a solid miss considering that we have Zelda in here. We've got all the Mario parties, we've got Power Tennis, we've got Strikers. Yeah, we gotta have Double Dash in here. That's too bad, but you know, is what it is in the end. It's still a great selection of uh, Nintendo GameCube games and you can always add your own titles too. You can add Double Dash in here very easily, so not a big deal. Uh, Game Boy Advance over here, 1,802 games, and it's probably gonna be the same sort of situation. We also have, I'm seeing them right here, the two-in-one games. So in these cases, you do end up with a lot more games than you probably should have just because, for example, and I'm actually seeing some duplicates here, it looks like at first glance. Oh no, it's not. It looks like it there, it says Monsters Inc. plus Finding Nemo, Monsters Inc. plus Finding Nemo, but um, they are different versions. So yeah, I mean, it pads the numbers a little bit, but not a huge deal in the end. This is where you end up with extra games though, because we likely have these two titles in here individually, plus we have the two-in-one version, plus we have another two-in-one version of the same title. So um, yeah, you know, technically then you have three Monsters, Inc. and three Finding Nemo's, just looking at it like this, and they might even be bundled in here you know, with some other games because they often did the two in ones a couple different ways. So just, you know, outlining why I think that number is a little bit high with 1802 for Game Boy Advance. True number should be closer to like, I think it's like 1400, maybe, maybe even that's too many. Next collection over is Nintendo DS with 643 games. We've got 
Game Gear over here from Sega with 405 games. We've got Sega Saturn, 304 games for Sega Saturn. Now that's a massive Saturn collection. Um, definitely a lot of people that love emulating Saturn titles. There's definitely some really cool games in here as well. So I'm gonna take a little look in here, see what we've got. This might be the most um, complete. Actually, here's our first obvious duplicate right here. Actually, Command and Conquer's in here twice. That might be a, you know what? These might be double, might be two parts to these games. I'm not sure. I don't think, maybe Grave, yeah, I don't know. Corpse, Corpse Killer, I don't remember being two, but maybe Graveyard Edition is. So I don't wanna say that's a duplicate. I know that D was multiple, so. Yeah, we might, it might just be broken up into parts here. Okay, so I don't wanna, condemn them for that, but we are on the lookout for duplicates. Okay, next collection over is Dreamcast. 72 games in here for Dreamcast, so that's pre pretty uh, pretty good. Let's see what we have, though, and we'll be looking for any duplicates, and I don't see any right, at, right out of the gate here. We've got Dynamite Cop, we've got Crazy Taxi 1 and 2, we've got Confidential Mission in here for Light Gun, and we do have the little Light Gun icons there, so we can easily pick out where the light gun games are located, which is awesome. Marvel vs. Capcom 2, I don't see the original in here. That's all right though. NFL Blitz 2000, Quarterback Club, some Sega Bass Fishing in here. Silent Scope, love that game. Test Drive, Virtua Tennis, one of my favorites. World Series Baseball, WWF Royal Rumble, Zombies Revenge, or Zombie Revenge rather. Lots of good stuff in here. This is a pretty stacked Dreamcast collection. Now, next one is Sega Naomi, and I believe, let's see, we've got 53 games here, so we might have some crossover between this and the last one. Yeah, we've got Crazy Taxi. What else do we have? Giga Wing 2, I believe that's a crossover as well. Power Stone. One and two, awesome. Ninja Assaults in here, great light gun game. Get some wrestling games in here. We got Virtua Tennis for Naomi as well. WWF Royal Rumble, Zombie Revenge again. Zero Gunner 2, awesome. I mean, we have a great selection of games in here for this collection as well. So next is Neo Geo MBS. This is the multi-video system over here. 160 games, Neo Geo CD, 97 games, Neo Geo Pocket, 82 games. Neo Geo Pocket Color with 89 games, Supervision 66 games, and we are back to our all games list where we kicked everything off. So 13,048 games in here in total, and we're not noticing any obvious duplicates in terms of them just padding the numbers intentionally. At least where we did see some duplicates, they are different versions or you know different releases. So very clean setup here. I do wanna jump into some gameplay demos just to test out the performance within this. I'm gonna pick the most demanding collections that I can to just kind of test out. So let's dive into that, see what the experience is like here, and then we'll move on to LaunchBox. Mario to serve.
All right, guys, so we just jumped out of Retrobat. Everything performed extremely well over there, very nicely put together as well. So we're jumping into LaunchBox now, and over here on the left-hand side, you can see all of our collections, and then they'll populate over here. So this top one here, which is in a different language, but that is our all games list. So similar to what we saw in Retrobat, we have our master list, and then we have it sectioned out below that into individual collections. So you can navigate to whatever you're looking for quite easily. So total number of games over here on the launch box side, 4,264 total games included. So we have right up here, first collection. Inside here, we have 44 games. Next one is going to be N64. N64 has 391 games. So let's actually go through N64. It's one of my favorite collections. And I know it's a super popular one with everybody else as well. So you can see how everything populates in. And then when you want to launch a game, you just simply click on it. You do get additional information over here on the right-hand side. But you just simply will go down here and click play in the bottom left corner. So nicely put together. There's foreign releases as well as U.S. releases on here. Let's make sure that we've got Mario Kart because we were missing Mario Kart Double Dash on Retrobat. So I just want to make sure that we do have at least Mario Kart 64 here. Make sure they're not against Mario Kart games because those are definitely some of the most popular options. So uh, we have Mario Tennis, Mario Party games. We have Mario Kart 64, sweet. All right, so let's go to the next collection. We'll jump back here and I'll test out a bunch of different games and game collections on LaunchBox just like I did Retrobat. So Nintendo DS, we have 71 games here and we may have some crossover between this and what we had over on uh, Retrobat. Over here we have NES, which I did not see over on Retrobat. 1,748 games for NES. We have Nintendo GameCube right behind that with 92 GameCube titles. So this definitely blows out the uh, Retrobat collection completely. We had just a fraction of that over there on Retrobat. And I'm seeing Donkey Kong titles, Dr. Mudo. We have some Final Fantasy. Lots of good stuff here. We've got Gun. I love that game. Harvest Moon, but do we have Mario Kart Double Dash? Because that's probably one of my favorite games for GameCube. So I want to make sure it's on here. We have a lot more Zelda over here than we had on Retrobat. Luigi's Mansion. I forgot about that over there. There we go. Mario Kart Double Dash. And we'll test it out. But we've got some Mario Party. We've got Mario Power Tennis. So I would say between the Retrobat side and the LaunchBox side, we pretty much have all of our really popular GameCube titles, and you can see up here, definitely have to mention Metroid Prime 1 and 2. We've got uh, NBA Street V3 over here, where you have your Mario character, or excuse me, your Nintendo characters, Mario and Luigi included, of course. Need for Speed Most Wanted, great game. Need for Speed Underground 2, awesome. we got some NHL titles, Paper Mario as well, Pikmin. Um, Lots of good stuff. Resident Evil. Awesome. Love those Resident Evil titles. Sonic, Soul Calibur, Star Fox. I mean, they're on point here with what they have included. Oh, and we also have Rogue Leader over here. That's, yeah, Rogue Leader. Um, so that's Rogue Squadron 2, Rogue Leader. But um, Monkey Ball, Super Smash Brothers Melee, Time Splitters 1 and 2. Wow, Splinter Cell. I forgot about that game. Chaos Theory. Remember having that for GameCube too. Sweet. I mean, we've got a great assortment of GameCube games. Definitely blows it out of the water over here versus, you know, on the other side. Now we have Nintendo Switch coming up next in line. So we've got 29 Switch games. That's pretty impressive. That might be the most Switch games I've seen on a uh, plug and play drive. So we've got Capcom Beat 'em Up Bundle. I've never seen that in anything like this before. Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy. Uh, my all-time favorite, Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled. Glad to see that's on here. Do Not Feed the Monkeys. Never played that, but I have heard of it. So we've got definitely some new Switch titles that I have not seen before um, You know, on this setup. We've got The Legend of, Del of Zelda Breath of the Wild in here. We've got uh, Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. We've got Tears of the Kingdom. Wow, that is impressive. Pokemon Sword, Pressure Overdrive, Salmon Run, Super Mario Odyssey. 
I mean, lots of great stuff in here. Wow, that's impressive. All right, so now Nintendo Wii, we have just 20 titles here, but what do we have? We have Donkey Kong Country Returns. We've got the Godfather Black Hand Edition, which is a great game. GoldenEye 007, love that. Batman 2, DC Super Heroes, Batman the Video Game, Indiana Jones, The Original Adventures, Lego, of course, Pirates of the Caribbean, Star Wars 3, Mario Kart Wii. We've got Mario Party 9, Metroid Prime 3, Monster Hunter 3, Resident Evil 4, Wii Edition, Silent Hill, Shattered Memories, Sonic Colors, Super Mario Galaxy, Super Mario Galaxy 2, Super Smash Bros. Brawl, Capcom over here. Wow, another excellent selection. Now we've got Wii U coming down the line next. For Wii U, we've got Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. We've got some more Zelda down here with Wind Waker. We've got Mario Kart 8. Wow. Mario Party 10, some Pokemon, we've got some more Super Mario 3D World in here, we've got Super Mario Maker, we've got Tekken Tag Tournament 2, wow. I mean, the best Wii U games, in my opinion, are included here. Now, we've got 40 Sega Dreamcast games, and this is even more stacked than what we had over on the last collection, I believe. And now we also have Sega Dreamcast, so we may end up with some um, additional games from what we had on the Retrobat side. But the Retrobat side for Dreamcast was pretty impressive as well. So we do have crossover with, you know, Crazy Taxi 1 and 2. Uh, D2 is over here, Dead or Alive 2, House of the Dead 2, got to have that in there. Jet Grind Radio, The King of Fighters, Soul Reaver from Legacy of Kane. We've got... Um, Mars Matrix is a great one. Marvel vs. Capcom, Clash of Superheroes. So that's cool. We have both of them over here. I think the other one we just had Marvel vs. Capcom 2. So definitely a little bit more balanced out over here. Power Stone 1 and 2. On Retrobat, we just had those for Sega Naomi. So awesome to see that they're in here for Dreamcast. San Francisco Rush 2049. Sonic Adventure 1 and 2, Soul Calibur. So, yeah, there is some crossover here, but um, all in all, it is still a wonderful selection of Dreamcast games, even if you can find some of the same titles on both sides, uh, LaunchBox and Retrobat. So, Sega Genesis next. We have 657 games over here for Genesis. Pretty straightforward. That's a massive collection, so I'm not too worried about things being not um, you know, found on here. Sega Saturn, much smaller collection than what we had on Retrobat, but... Still looks like some good titles. Love Daytona USA. And because I jumped into um, Die Hard uh, Arcade on the other side, I'll probably skip jumping into Sega Saturn over here, but I have no doubt in my mind that it does work effectively. And it, and it actually is a lot of different titles than the other side, so I feel like we're gaining titles here, even with a smaller collection. So now we have... PlayStation, which I noticed was not on the other side, Retrobat. Uh, so 117 PlayStation titles over here. Looks like all your Crash games. Get some Digimon in here. Driver, Final Fantasy, lots of Final Fantasy games. Gran Turismo, Grand Theft Auto. I mean, definitely have your classics in here for sure. Medal of Honor, love those games. Metal Gear Solid, love those, Need for Speed. Wow. Impressive selection, to say the least. All your classic PlayStation 1 games. So now let's go over to PS2. So, hundred wow, 122 PS2 games. That's pretty incredible. Now, these take up a lot more space than what we've seen in a lot of these collections. So we've got some Burnout. I saw Bully up there. Dead to Rights 1 and 2. Devil May Cries in here. A couple of those. Looks like... Three Devil May Cries, awesome. Got some ESPN Hockey. We've got uh, Fight Night 2004, Final Fantasy games in here as well. God of War 2 is in here, sweet. Some more Gran Turismo, Grand Theft Autos. Looks like all the Grand Theft Autos, Guitar Heroes. Wow, lots of Guitar Hero games. Jack and Daxter. Kingdom Hearts, Tomb Raider. Manhunt 1 and 2, Max Payne's in here. We have both Max Payne's, just Max Payne 2. Okay. Mercenaries, Metal Gear Solid games, Metal Slug. Got some NBA, some MLB, Need for Speed. Stacked, absolutely stacked in here. Wow. 
Wow. All right. Let's see. So we got PSP and PS4. Interesting. All right. So 27 PS3 games. That's a lot. Okay. Castlevania, Catherine, Dead or Alive 5, Devil May Cry 4, Sweet, Fast and Furious Showdown, Good Game, God of War 1 and 2 bundled together, God of War 3, Some Lego Indiana Jones, Lollipop Chainsaw, Mass Effect 2, Ratchet and Clank Games, Ridge Racer 7, Baja 1000, Soul Calibur 4, Tomb Raider Trilogy, The Wolf Among Us. I mean, great PS3 games. We got to test those out. Now, PS4. Okay, so PS4, 14 games. Now, I always have to mention this because a lot of people say, hey, is, is there PS4 emulation? Is there an emulator for this? These are going to be PC versions. But at the end of the day, they are still the same games. So, yes, it's a different version. It's not true PS4, but still impressive to say the least. Last of Us, um, Prototype 2. Red Dead Redemption, Red Dead Redemption 2, there we go, we say that too quickly, Resident Evil titles, Spider-Man, The Witcher, great racing game right here, really impressive, all right, PSP, 94 PSP games, okay. Good mix of PSP games. And I like PSP, but I'm going to tell you right now, looking at all these awesome collections here in LaunchBox, there's no way I think I'm going to actually play PSP games on this. There's just so many other things to choose from, but still, great selection of PSP games here. I mean, really some solid stuff. It's not your typical stuff that you see in these emulation builds for PSP where it's a lot of PSP minis games, very few actual PSP true titles, but I mean, you can see they, they got all the best stuff here. Really great stuff. Demanding PSP titles too. So, all right. Super Nintendo is going to be, it looks like our last collection and we have 758 Super Nintendo games here. Not worried about this collection at all. This is very basic compared to, you know, what we just jumped into. So... Not even going to bother testing this collection out today, but, well, on camera anyways. I'll test at least one game out just to be sure, but on camera, let's jump into some more demanding stuff and just verify that this stuff has actually functioning properly, but all in all, I mean, this is a really stacked collection here. Really impressed with everything that's included so far, both on LaunchBox and RetroBat, but let's dive into, what are we going to do? Let's do some GameCube, let's do some Switch, let's do some um wii u let's do some ps2 ps3 n64 yeah, we're gonna we're gonna try a little bit of everything i think let's dive into it
All right, guys, so here we are in our last section of this drive. We're now in play night. So we've had a great experience over there on Retrobat. We've had a great experience over on Launchbox. Everything's working great so far. So now we got to jump into our AAA titles here on play night. And there's 89 AAA titles here. So the way that this is laid out, it's very similar to actually Launchbox. We have our titles on the left-hand side. And then as we click on them, they're going to populate on the right-hand side. So if we go over here to Protato, we click on that. It loads in on the right-hand side here. We can play it. We have our description. We have all our information. A community score which is pretty nice as well so you know if it's a popular title or if it's you know something that most people are just not into so really nice layout here and we can kind of go through here comb through the different games now right off the bat Brotato is probably the one that i noticed the most um, that i'm most familiar with capcom fighting collection is a good one as well uh chicken police i actually recently learned about a little bit we also have let's see we've got do Not Feed the Monkeys, which we actually saw. Oh, Do Not Feed the Monkeys, $20.99. We've got Double Dragon over here with uh, Rise of the Dragons. We've got Dragon's Dogma. Elden Rings over here. Final Fantasy 4, 5, and 6 is here. Grand Theft Auto 3, Grand Theft Auto uh, San Andreas. And now these are the Definitive Edition as well. We also have uh, this one right here, Vice City, the Definitive Edition. We've got Hades. We've got... Hunting Simulator 2, which is actually pretty sweet. I actually recently played this outside of this drive. Pretty sweet if you like hunting games. Limbo, Little Nightmares, love the Little Nightmares games. The third release is actually coming out very soon. Ninja Gaiden, Sigma 2. Uh, what else do we have here? Definitely some cool stuff. I'm not familiar with uh, these Ori titles, but I have heard good things. Punch Club 2, RimWorld. Samurai Shodown. Get some SpongeBob SquarePants. The Cosmic Shakes over here. Tekken 8. Wow. Tekken 8 is on here. That's pretty cool. Love Tekken 8. The King of Fighters 2002. Unlimited Match. Titanfall 2. Valor and Victory. WWE 2K Battlegrounds. I actually just recently played this one as well. And this is a pretty sweet title if you like wrestling, but you're also kind of like an old school gamer. It's kind of, it's kind of got a retro feel to it, but obviously you can see the graphics right there. It's kicked up to modern day graphics. So really a cool game there as well. So, and I have heard good things about Vampire Survivors. Never played this myself, but I have heard some good things. So definitely a lot of games here. Again, 89 total games, but you guys know the drill at this point. We got to jump in here. We got to test out some titles and just verify that they work and that, you know, everything is uh, doing what it's supposed to do here. So we'll dive into a couple random titles and uh, see where we're at. There, a white-tailed deer. Don't shoot it just yet. You need to carefully plan your shot. Take a deep breath and aim for its vital organs. That deer good. Now, get out of the stand. Go find the blood train. Ain't too far now. There it is. You did it. All you have to do now is bag it. Bring it on back to the cat. <laughs>
All right, guys, we just jumped into this three terabyte plug and play game drive today, and I found this to be exceptional. This is, in my opinion, the best plug and play game drive I've ever reviewed, past or present. Now, let me tell you guys why, because this is not the largest capacity I've ever tested out. This doesn't offer the highest number of games, but this is a extremely well-polished setup. Uh, there's not tons of duplicates in here padding the numbers falsely. A lot of times what we see are game drives that advertise 100,000 games or you know, 110,000 games, and they're trying to market to people that don't understand what they're getting themselves into. They're looking at numbers as value. They're saying, okay, 100,000 games versus 20,000 games. Obviously, the 100,000 games is the better value. That's not the case because they just pad these numbers in most cases. They're adding duplicates upon duplicates. They oftentimes will not put things in alphabetical order, and that's intentional. That's done in a way to not show you guys that there are duplicates. If you are looking at things in alphabetical order and you jump into the Genesis collection, for example, if it's in alphabetical order, anytime they add duplicates, they would be lined up with each other. If there's 20 Sonic the Hedgehog games in there, they're all identical. They would be side by side. But if you take away that alphabetical order, they're no longer side by side, and the user doesn't see it as easily. So this is one of the many tactics that they do to deceive people and to just try to market to the masses. This right here does not have duplicates. There are some games that you'll see on the list twice. They're multi-disc games. So um, Metal Gear Solid, for example, a lot of those titles were double-disc games. So you might see those games listed twice in a collection. That's because there's disc one and there's disc two. So really easy to navigate on here. The data is scraped properly. Um, there's no mismatches. Everything is just very well polished and everything that I jumped into and I jumped into way more than I actually showed you guys in this video, just in an effort to not make this a four hour video, everything ran extremely well from your classic arcade all the way through PS2, PS3, PS4, uh, GameCube, and of course, AAA titles as well. I tested out extensively. Everything runs well. Keep in mind, you need a powerful PC to enjoy everything that this has to offer. Don't think you're going to get a $150 PC and be able to enjoy PS4 games or PS3 games or AAA titles. It's not going to happen. I'm using a relatively inexpensive gaming PC, HP Pavilion gaming PC. Um, I was able to enjoy everything without restrictions today. But obviously, check out your specs. Make sure that you are meeting the requirements for some of these emulators and the games included in those collections. Now, um, in terms of value here, I paid $87 and change for this. I'm not connected in any way, shape, or form with the people behind this product. I'm not getting any sort of kickbacks for this video or anything like that. I want to make mention of that. $87 and change is what I paid. The value is 100% there. That's a ridiculously low price for something like this. I mean, there's AAA titles on here that just came out three months ago. I'm not going to name any names, but you guys saw the list. You guys saw what's on here. It's pretty crazy at the end of the day. Proceed at your own risk, of course, but the value's here and everything works very effectively. Now, I do want to talk about security. I did a um, three different virus scans on here. I believe that you have to virus scan and malware scan everything that you plug into your PC or your network. There was nothing that came back as a threat on here. There was nothing even remotely concerning. I had zero things found on here. That means that this drive in my hand has no threats to me. Doesn't mean that the drive in your hand doesn't have threats to you. Anytime anything has been set up without your knowledge or that you haven't physically set up yourself, make sure that you scan it. I don't care if it's a flash drive, a micro SD card, a hard drive like this, or a full on PC, just scan everything. Make sure that you're safe and secure. Make sure your PC is safe. Make sure that your network is safe. You just never know what's going to happen. We're in a crazy time right now where everybody's trying to get our data. Everybody's trying to hack into our accounts and gain access to everything that we have. So just be safe. Scan everything that you're connecting over. It's nothing against this drive, nothing against the people behind this drive. Just as a PSA, scan, scan, scan. Make sure that you're safe and secure. So let's talk about now the quality here. This is super high quality. Um, the, there's cooling on here that stays nice and cool. It has its own power supply cable. It connects over through USB. It, it is plug and play, my definition of plug and play. There are drivers that you need to add, but they're included on here. You open up the folder for the drivers, you download them. It takes about 25 seconds at the most, and you're able to dive into all of your games without restrictions. Of course, as long as your PC can handle what you're trying to play on here. So great experience, but you can customize this experience. We have LaunchBox on here. We have RetroBat on here. The collections do differ. There is a little bit of crossover like Dreamcast. We had Crazy Taxi 1 and 2 on both sides, but it's not enough crossover where you know I think that they're doing anything sketchy to pad the numbers as I was talking about before. 
Um, but you can customize your experience. So for example, we have PS1 and 2 over on the LaunchBox side. We don't have it on Retrobat. If you're somebody like me that likes Retrobat over LaunchBox, you can pull those ROMs over to Retrobat and enjoy your experience over there. You don't have to leave it exactly as it is. You can move things around. You can customize this. You can add or remove games. AAA titles. There's tons of AAA titles, titles on Play Night. A lot of great options here, but there's a lot of games that I personally would not ever play, like that Police Chicken. I've heard great things about it. I tested it out today. It's not my cup of tea. I don't like it. It's not the type of game I would enjoy. Nothing against the game personally. It's just not what I'm you know, actually interested in playing. So I would remove it from my actual drive right here. Free up the space, get rid of it. I'm never going to launch it again. Clear it out, open up space, bring something else in that I'll actually enjoy. So you can use this as a starting point. You don't have to leave this. It's not the end all be all here. You can customize this to be your own experience. Just, you know, add or remove stuff. It is stable. It's not going to crap out. Obviously, make sure you know what you're doing. Don't just go in here and start wreaking havoc on the files and folders, you will ruin it if you don't know what you're doing. But if you watch some YouTube tutorials and you get you know, acclimated with what goes into LaunchBox setups or Play Night setups or Retrobat, you know what you're doing, you can move stuff around and customize the experience and make it your own and improve it. So at the end of the day, we all have different tastes. So this just lines up more with what I'm looking for. GameCube was a great selection on here of titles. Dreamcast, Saturn was great. PS2, PS3, PS4. PS4 titles aren't true PS4. They're PC versions. Some people get worked up about that. I personally don't care at the end of the day as long as I can enjoy those titles, and I did. It's a good experience. Um, but one thing I do want to mention is there's no original Xbox on here. I would like to see some original Xbox. That would be my only criticism towards this. I'm not a big fan of the Xbox emulator. Um, not every game runs extremely well, but a lot of titles do run well. So you could add the titles that do run well on here. You could do that yourself too. I was talking about customizing things to better your personal experience. You could certainly do that. It's very easy to do that. Uh, you could even add Xbox 360 on here if you wanted to. I'm not a big fan of Xbox 360 emulation, but there are some titles that do run extremely well. So you can add stuff like that. I'd love to see a little taste of those collections on here. Even if it was just two games, it would give you a little more than what we have currently. And it would just at least set up those emulators so people could easily add their own stuff in rather than having to physically add in the actual emulator itself. You know, if the collection was already started with just one or two titles, it would just be a little bit easier for the user to get started in that direction. But, you know, that's, you know, just one minor thing, you know, in the big picture, but definitely like what this offers. Let me know what you guys think in the comments here on this, on this video. I'm going to provide a link also in the description of this video. So you guys can click over, see what it's currently selling for, because currently the sale price is what I paid, $87 and change, but prices fluctuate on a daily basis, so don't hold me to that. It could fluctuate you know, one way or another, but that's going to do it for today. Again, let me know what you guys think of what this offers in the comments below. Give me a thumbs up on the video if you enjoyed the content today, and of course, hit subscribe to stay in the loop for all future videos right here on the Retro Gaming Guy YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.